Hello and welcome to our channel, Just Me Today. I've been a member of the XJW Reddit community for about four, maybe four and a half years now, and I've seen the numbers grow there from about 4,000 to over 40,500 as of today. I'm quite uh, involved on the forum and uh, I find it very good for helping people. There's a lot of new ones coming, as you'd imagine, with over 35,000 people joining in the last few years and the questions that get asked are quite frequently uh, the same. Each week you'll get uh, new ones coming on to the uh, sub and they'll ask the same sort of questions and I thought well one of the questions that get asked which uh, could be quite difficult to get through often is about how do you get rid of the indoctrination. A lot of people expect that as soon as you find out TTATT, the truth about the truth, you're going to just uh, miraculously be able to convince others because data and facts matter. What we're talking about is beliefs. We're not talking about data and facts. If it was all about facts, someone would just go to JW Facts and they'd see that it was all society's publications, totally made sense, it was all logical, all directly provable, and they would be out of the cult in a flash. What is actually happening, of course, is that people are conditioned from a very early age. And this is why a lot of people that are born into the religion have difficulty getting out. Just imagine, if you were born in India, what are the chances of you being a Hindu? If you're born in Saudi Arabia or Iran, what are the chances of you being a Muslim? So really, what you are in terms of your beliefs is largely a factor of where you were born and what religion your parents had or what upbringing your parents gave you in terms of beliefs. A lot of parents in the Western world are not particularly religious or not overly religious and so they just are bringing their children up to be good people, moral people and they bring them up to think rationally and logically. However, that's not the case when you're born as a JW. You have it drummed into you from day one that if you're not good, you're going to be missing out on the paradise. The other thing that is mentioned, of course, is the fear that, you know, Jehovah is going to kill you if you do something wrong. Such a loving God, of course. But all of this programming, it took years to get you to the state where you felt, oh yes, this is the truth, I'm going to get baptised and really make the truth my own. I hate using those cult phrases, but you'll understand what I mean. It took years to get that way. It's not going to be as easy as you think to get out of the mental programming. It's going to take probably a number of years to get beyond that mental programming. So how do you do it? Well, I believe the first thing is get rid of the cult language. When you start hearing yourself saying the truth, replace it with the lie or the cult teaching or whatever phrase you find helps you to describe it accurately for what it is. A man-made teaching that has never been true. It has failed so many times, the promises that Watchtower have made that the lie is what I call it. Then you have brothers and sisters. Well, brothers and sisters is loaded language as well, because if you stop believing what the organisation teaches, these brothers and sisters will very quickly disown you. So they are not like brothers and sisters in a real family, where family is family. They are conditional family. They will drop you like a hot rock as soon as you start asking any questions. So ditch the brothers and sisters as well and talk of them as cult members or whatever phrase you prefer. If you make a list of all the language that you use every day, you will find there are huge benefits to be had from getting rid of that language. Watchtower uses language very cunningly. Here's an example. What comes to your mind if I say the word the word, rather, worldly. Instantly, you think those evil people under Satan's control. Those people that God is going to kill at Armageddon. 
those people outside of God's true organisation. Do you see what that one word has done? It's made you disconnect from everybody else in the world except for Jehovah's Witnesses. It's made you look upon all of those people as bad, even though logic will tell you that 99% of those people are great people just trying to live their life and bring up their kids and do the best they can in life. Logic, you see, isn't the first thing that comes into your mind. The first thing that comes into your mind is what has been programmed there by Watchtower for years. It's this black versus white thinking that Watchtower relies on to trigger you, to get you to think a certain way. Likewise, if I said the word elders to you, what would be your thought? You'd immediately think, oh, elders, yes, I've got to obey what they say, or they're there to, to shepherd me and help me. If I said enforces to you, you'd have a completely different viewpoint. But that's what really elders are. They're enforcers. The CO, circuit overseer. Oh, doesn't it sound nice? He's just an enforcer to enforce the governing body's rulings on the elders. He's like a middle manager. You've got the bosses at the uh, board level, which is the GB, and you've got the COs that are the enforcers for the GB. They go around and make sure all the records are done and all the reports are in and everything that the, all the rules that the GB wants, they are there to enforce. And elders get quite scared when the CO is coming because they know that's what happens. So my first point is remove the mental programming by getting rid of the language. The second thing, and this is something that seems to me very, very obvious, but a lot of people have a great difficulty with it. Depression and feeling depressed, feeling down, never feeling good enough, is what is common amongst Jehovah's Witnesses. They are made to feel this way because it's only if you don't feel good enough that you're going to try harder to get into the new system. So basically it's guilt and fear that is being used to prod you along and get you doing what Watchtower wants you to do, which is to give up your life for them, to donate all your money to them and to spend all of your time focused on what they want you to focus on. So if you can stop going to those meetings, you will remove a massive source of that feeling of not being good enough. I can remember the first meeting I went to after I woke up and I sat there and I thought, I can't contain myself any longer. I'm going to get up and shout out, this is all BS and I'm out of here. But I managed to contain myself and stuck out that meeting. The following week, the only way that I could actually get through that meeting was to take my iPad and read Crisis of Conscience during the meeting. And that was the last meeting that we went to. Meetings are part of the indoctrination process. If you are feeling down and you stop going to meetings, you will feel guilty because that's what you've been programmed to feel. But you will feel so much better the more meetings you miss, the better you will feel, as long as you replace that indoctrination with rational thinking, proving to yourself that you're not going to be looked down on for missing a meeting by that invisible sky daddy upstairs. You can rationalise all you like about the things that Watchtower is teaching you and you will find they are all depressive. They are all designed to make you feel like nothing. To make you think that doing what you want to do Pursuing your dreams and your passions and your goals is bad. Doing what Watchtower wants you to do, following their passions, their goals, their dreams, that whole bubble, the whole Watchtower bubble, fairy tale world as I call it, that is what will make you happy. The reality is it does the opposite. It does not make you happy because you can never attain it. It's an impossible dream. 
Those are the two things that I thought I would focus on today. There are a lot of other things, but if you can make a list of all the language that you use, replace those words that are the cult words with the reality, what they really are, and if you can get away from the meetings and those toxic people that are at the meetings, you will get to recover, but it will take time. You didn't become a witness overnight. You're not going to be able to get out of that mental mindset overnight. It will take time. The good news is, and there's heaps of good news, the good news is that you will get there if you put in the effort. But if you just stop going to the meetings and you don't do anything, you will have that programming pop back up into your head and you'll probably feel no better off. So you must take some action. And that action is proving to yourself that what they're teaching is a load of rubbish. When you can see through their publications and you can read a paragraph and can spot all the trigger words, you can spot all the guilt tripping, all the fear, all the circular reasoning, all the straw man arguments, then your eyes are just opened and you see it for what it is. It's a high control cult that uses fear, guilt and obligation to control you. So if you enjoyed this uh, video, please click the like button, subscribe because uh, you'll get an uh, advice of uh, future videos if you click the bell below. And I look forward to talking to you in our next video. Thank you for watching.